All right, so enough of the slide jive. Let's go ahead and actually install and get SDM running. I'm going to make one huge assumption, and that is that you are capable of getting out to Cisco, finding the software, downloading it, and unzipping it. And that's exactly what I did. So you have this file with all the un this unzipped file. I just have it on my desktop. Look for the setup icon, double click that guy, and here we go. Here's our first window, and it's going to ask you where you want to install it, and generally going to do it on the computer. Like I said, we'll do this later on the router. You can do two birds with one stone if you like. We're going to just choose this computer. And I already had this installed here, so and we'll just install it again. Pretty easy. You want to install, and it's going to take a little bit. I'm going to pause actually here. And I really paused for about three or four seconds. It's that fast. So now you have the ability to launch SDM. This will be in your program files. Uh, it's under Cisco and then Cisco SDM and SDM. Um, I believe it installs an icon on your desktop if, as well. If not, you can do that on your own. Anyways, we're finished. Let's go ahead and launch this guy. And oh, oops, I'm going to pause right here because I have to actually fire up this router. While I'm waiting for old Wheezy over here to uh, boot up, just wanted to show you this. I'm recording this on the 25th of February 2010, and quite literally, this just came out. Cisco SDM is about to be end of life. Looks like it's going to be replaced by something called the Cisco Configuration Professional. Uh, I'll take a look at that a little bit later. I just think it's funny that this just happened while I was creating this video for uh, SDM. This shouldn't be a surprise, though, because like I said earlier, they stopped development on this back in 2007, so it's been... I mean, it was late 2007. It's been a full two years plus since they uh, put out a new version. So, anyways, looks like there'll be some new software to be playing with. Okay, so the sound in the background you might hear is the fan from this 2610XM. Got this set up with a single connection, 10.100.100.1, uh, and I should be able to ping my PC, which is going to be 10.100.100.100. Okay, I need to learn basic troubleshooting. You can see it was up and down. I had plugged in the uh, Ethernet cable into the router. Unfortunately, I have a few cables around here, and the one that I plugged in was not the one connected to my PC. So let's try this again, and there we go. We can hit my PC. So I should be able to manage this from this router from my PC based on that reachability. So let's go ahead through our steps. Go into configuration mode. Um, the first thing we're going to want to do is enable the HTTP server. And I'm just going to do a show run to show you what's currently configured on here. I don't believe I have this set up. Oh, you old, old router. There you go. Well, actually it is. So either by default or I had this set up earlier. I can't remember which uh, IP HTTP server is enabled. We're actually going to go ahead and see this no IP HTTP secure server. This is the one that I prefer to use and when you do that it's going to set up an RSA key okay so what it's done is it's created a certificate so that we can have our secure communications so this is how you this is how you configure HTTPS this is how you configure HTTP so we have reachability via both here normally in the real world you don't want to just have open HTTP uh, we're pretty safe here because it's just my PC and this router that's the first step. The second step is to set up a username with privilege level 15. And excuse me while I shut up and type. So that's what I did here. So this is user packet lab, password packet lab, and then privilege level 15. And then the final step to this is to do IP HTTP. Yeah, this will work for both. So you have a number of choices here, but we're looking for authentication. Uh, this will use the authentication for both HTTP and HTTPS. So this is how we're going to specify that we want to have the router use this user account, uh, really just local user accounts, when uh, users try to connect via HTTP. So as you can see, you can have it set to AAA, which would be your TACX, uh, or you can use the enable passwords, or you can use the local username and passwords, which is what we're going to do. So that's it. Uh, like I said, there's a final step, and we'll see that later on when we try and run this from the router itself. Write this. Okay, so we should be good to go here. Um, I can bring back up my SDM launcher. And now we're going to specify the IP address of the router, which is going to be 10.100.100.1. If we want to use HTTPS, uh, we can go ahead and specify that here. Let's not, in this case, uh, let's just use regular HTTP. And you probably didn't see that. 
Let me pause. So what had happened was it had launched and it had come over to, uh, this is Firefox. I'm running something called IE View and I have it set up that when SDM launches to go ahead and pass that over to Internet Explorer. Okay, so here we are in IE and I've got ActiveX controls that are being blocked. So I'm just gonna allow that, yes, go ahead. And so then the next pop-up that you'll see will be the username password. Uh, take a look at this here. It shows you the browser. In this case, I'm running uh, IE80 and Java is enabled, which is a good thing. And it says if this will open another window so you can close this if you want to. Uh, and here we're going to specify the username. I can't type and talk at the same time. Oh, I can, but I can't type and talk accurately and I want to get this right. So Packet Lab, Packet Lab, you can have it remember your password. It probably wouldn't do that just from a you know, basic security standpoint. Whatevs, go ahead and hit enter. Okay, so it pulled up this little pop-up here, and again, we have to allow blocked content. Thank you. And here we go. Well, here's our little Java applets. This guy will get stuck behind Windows if you don't see him pop up. I've had this happen before. Pull him down here right now. So I want to show you that it does say do not close this window. You need to keep this window open during the duration of running SDM. So come back up here, Thwat Consulting CC, whatever. Uh, you may not see this because I've actually rolled back my Java version to 1.4, whatever the fuck it was. Uh, it was. This isn't the latest and greatest Java version. When I was running it with the latest and greatest, I didn't see this, but uh, that's probably why the, the security certificate was expired or was not yet valid. It might be set for some future date, whatever. Enough speculation, just click yes. And here we go. It's going to ask me for my credentials again. Again, you may not see this. I don't remember seeing this before I rolled back my version. This is a screen that you're gonna see just before it loads. So it's loading and you can see it's getting the routers config, populating modules, and I'll try and stick with this. I don't think it's gonna to be too terribly long. There we go, and we're up and good. So this is what you're going to see when everything's loaded here. And I'm not gonna give a full tour here because that's a different video, but you can see this is the 2600, I'm sorry, 2610XM. Uh, it's kind of cool because it shows that I got a buck 28 of memory and I'm using 40. Uh, my flash is 48 megs. Here's the version of code that I'm running. I'm running 12.4. Uh, Here's the version of SDM 2.5 is the latest and greatest. And <laughs> according to the news that I just heard today, it's also the last. And you can see there's buttons up here for like configure, monitor. If you do a configuration, you can refresh. Down the side here, you have uh, security out is a really cool one firewalls, interfaces, and connections. Now, depending on what router you're running this on, you may not have all these options. Um, I know that like VPN, well, it shows up, huh? Must be enough memory. A, a lot of times it's the, the platform or the memory, but anyways, I'm not gonna go through that because I promised you that this would come in a different lesson, but this is getting this up and running. So right now we're running from the PC and we're running SDM and we're ready to get going on this sucker. So we're good to go here. Let's go ahead and I'm going to stop and we're going to run through running this from the router itself. Okay, before we get to this, I'll just show you how to exit. You just go to file and then exit. Um, it'll give you this little pop-up. You can decide that you don't want to see this all the time. Just go ahead and click yes and this will start closing out your windows. So if you decide for whatever reason that you want to run this from the router itself, unfortunately there is not a way to specify to run this from the router, you just basically have the ability to choose a device and then whether you want to run HTTPS. So in order to do this, close out of this, we go back to setup. So don't delete this folder, I guess, if you, if you plan to run this from the uh, router. Go ahead and double click setup. In this case, we're going to choose Cisco router. You guys can see this. And I'm going to choose 10, oh, that's my router. And I provide my credentials. So we should have already set this up with HTTP. If I didn't bore you to tears and put you to sleep during the slide portion, you know that I'm missing something important right here. And we'll see that in a second, but I'll go ahead and hit next. And it will try to connect to my router. And I got the bad juju here. It said it wasn't able to connect to the router. And the reason why is that I didn't go in and do that third step, which was uh, setting up my VTY lines to allow login with the local user account. So I'm going to click OK here, leave this screen up, and then I'm going to go back to the router.